There's a train coming in three minutes. Deep breaths, Roger. Two minutes. Slow breaths. One minute. I brace myself, ready to go. The front of the train hurtling towards me. I brace myself for pain. We're out on a big one. A fat one. A fucking huge night out. See, in my town, Fridays are half big, but Saturdays are massive. <laughs> Everyone who's anyone is out tonight. Kicking off it is. Blood on the streets. Bar bras, macho men and war-torn women. Sambuca town. Beers from barrels past their best before. Booze cheap as chips, nah, cheaper. Two for one, one in, one out. Club 22 and a packet of 20s smoked. Little plastic packets flutter along the street. Their drug tenants have gone. The weather is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Properly windy. That rain that sticks to your face and ruins your VO5 gelled hair. The air smells cold. Do you know what I mean? Next to me, on my mission to lager hell, is Gareth. Gareth Jones. The man, the myth, the tit. <laughs> me and him have known each other since we were four. When I first met him, I thought he was a proper dick. He had a stupid smile, smelly ass. I said hello all innocent like and he threw sand in my eyes and kicked me in the bollocks. When I asked why, he said he'd never met anyone my size before, which is fair because his family are all tiny. He thought I was a child giant. I taught Gareth how to ride a bike when we were teenagers. I even taught him how to swim but he never got the hang of it. Time hasn't been kind to Gareth. He's got a receding hairline, chipped teeth and a voice that could break glass. Are you fucking listening to me? He said. <laughs> yeah, so basically you get a soda water, right? And you know, um, squash. I will get lime squash and you add vodka. Soda water, lime and vodka. Slav. <laughs> That's what he calls it. Slav. <laughs> Gareth thinks he invented everything, even jam donuts. After pre-drinks at mine, we begun the night at the pub, the club, our local. Spit and sawdust kind of place. Could do with a lick of paint, truth be told. An old oak bar. Your feet stick to the floor. Your elbows stick to the tables. It's like drinking on a moth trap. Across from the bar, there's a stage. The stage is only used tonight, and tonight is karaoke night. Gareth's dad, Di, runs the karaoke. He knows what he's doing, does Di. Keeps the line flowing and mixes up the music well. Gareth's father, Di, is fat. Fat, big bastard, that <laughs> beats when it can. He's dressed to kill in jogging bottoms and a t-shirt with a chicken korma stain. <laughs> Where the fuck have you been? The smoke machine's fucked and it won't stop fucking smoking and now everyone's fucking staring and I'm sweating. Give me a fucking pipe, will you? <laughs> it's like gorillas in the mist in the club. You can't really make anyone out, just loads of eyeballs now and again. You bump into someone eating chicken and chips out of a basket. Through the smoke, I can make out a beacon of hope. Beth behind the bar. She's waving at me. She's all, come and get me, I'm a big shot, big boy. <laughs> See, Beth is a stunner. She got great eyebrows. Eyebrows like, like beautiful caterpillars. Eyebrows that could walk off her face. Great smile too. She got teeth like a fucking dentist. Eyes, brown as, I want to say like mud, but mud shit, conkers. <laughs> we always stare at each other deep, like, like right now, like the music slows and she notices me for the first time. I'm wearing like a blazer, you know, something classy like, and she's in a sequin number. I lead her to the dance floor. Everyone fucks off because they know I'm art. I'm a great dancer. Music plays, something classy, Frank Sinatra. We dance like my Nan and Bamba used to, old school like. I give her a rose and snap out of it. Gareth grabs him by the neck. She's just fanning smoke and you staring at her again. <laughs> I've always wanted to fuck Beth, but I can't. I'm not a type, apparently. I don't have the balls to speak to her. 
She notices us, us at the bar. She speaks. All of you then sharp as usual. <laughs> she racks up two Jaeger bombs and two pints of lager. I want to say something really fucking slick, because I am fucking slick. But all I can come up with is, uh, thanks, Beth. Really appreciate that. How <laughs> much is that? Fuck this. She raises an eyebrow, flicks around, and keeps the change. By this point, me and Gareth are well oiled, mainly from the tequila and pre drinks at my house. You know when Gareth's had a few, because his right eye starts to turn out. <laughs> Di calls our names. Roger Evans and my beautiful son, Gareth Jones, please. We make our way up to the microphones. Me and Gareth always sing together. The music starts. I look over and he turns his back to prepare. I know the back of his pinhead like the back of my hand. Beautiful bastard. <laughs> when we were in school, I was the first kid allowed to take the class rap nibbles home, just for the weekend. Gareth came over my house every day to see her. When I woke up on Monday, Nibbles was lying flat on her back, stiff. She looked like she was mid-run. I worked my way round the cage and saw something that had stuck with me for the rest of my life. Nibbles' eyeball was hanging out of her mouth. Her mouth? Ow! It was all gooey and there was blood splattered all over the hay. On the way to school, I called Gareth as normal. I explained what had happened and it made him cry. When we arrived, the teacher thought it was odd that I covered the cage in a bed sheet. She asked me to pull the sheet off in front of the whole class. Gareth tried to argue my case, but the teacher wasn't having any of it. I pulled the sheet off to reveal a cage of eyeballs and guts and go. I was lost for words. There was silence, deafening silence. While everyone stared at me, they thought I was a murderer. Then, Gareth stood up. Everyone turned their attention to him, and as cool as a cucumber, he just said, Nibbles choked on her eyeball and coughed it up. There was blood everywhere. I think from the post-mortem, we can assume Roger didn't kill her, and she died of natural causes. <laughs> the whole class laughed. Gareth got detention for me. We spill out of the club and onto the street. There's a whiff of carnage in the air, walls bulging, people laughing, spewing, people shagging down an alley over a wheelie bin. Spilt chips, pizza still hot, face down, shame. A good night out feels like you're dying, don't it? Not grim dying, like happy dying, like your liver's turned into a slug. A slug that's unfortunately eaten those green pellets that your nan would lay down for them in the garden. But then that slug has come back as some sort of hulk slug and keeps <laughs> eating more and more pellets and after a while it eats your nan's whole garden. My liver gave up you hope years ago. If yours hasn't, you need another fucking Jaeger. Drink, 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 drink. Gareth, who's now dry humping a lamppost while talking to some girls and spewing all at the same time, is having a great night. There's only one call to be made. A text, in fact, to our dealer, Tiny Tony. A lot of people are scared of Tiny Tony because he held up spar with a standing knife when he was 13. He's always been sound to me. <laughs> when I mention Tony, Gareth recoils. No drugs, he says. No drugs? What are you talking about, I say? I've seen you put half a Columbia up there in my time. How come you're all Lorraine Kelly about it now? Then he drops it. He owes Tiny Tony money. How much? I says. A grand? He says. A, f a, a grand? A fucking grand? Are you fucking kidding me? It's fine, he says. I hope it's fine, because Tony and his crew are on their way. Ah, oh, right on time. A blacked out white Ford Focus pulls up. We fold ourselves into the back of the car from either side. There's one of the crew sitting in the middle. It's a real squeeze. It's very fucking sweaty. The car shoots off. I can't see the driver, but Tiny Tony's in the passenger seat. We drive through dark alleys under the railway and on until we pull up at a quiet car park looking out to sea. Tiny Tony has yellow teeth. His hair covers his face. He looks like a rat. Eyeballs everywhere, nose twitching with powder. He's unpredictable. Evening, gentlemen. 
It's what it be, boys. Bolivian marching powder, stash, snuff, snow, cash or card. You take card, you say. <laughs> of course I fucking don't. <laughs> now, what the fuck is going on, Gareth? I thought I could fucking trust you, and now you owe me a lot of fucking money. You are making me look bad. If I remember correctly, you was good at maths in school. Gareth squirms, stares out to sea. I don't like people fucking with me, Gareth. You're gonna leave me with no fucking choice soon. Oi! Are you listening? Gareth frantically pulls out a 20 out of his pocket and gives it to Tony. That'll pay for my Mackie D's. What about the rest? A member of the crew sitting in the middle of us grabs Gareth's face, so I grip his throat. Tony shouts, everyone fucking calm down! I want it by Monday, Gareth, all right? Gareth nods. No ifs, no buts. My money, Monday, or his fucking kneecaps. Tony turns to me. Oh, Roger. Me and you are square, yeah? I nod. You've been good to me? I've been good to you. A secret compartment behind the gear stick opens. I slowly let go of the crew member's throat. Neon lights, blinded. Inside, there are white chemicals in multicolour see-through bags like sweets. It's a long time since I've been to a sweet shop, but this is the feeling I got when I did. Thrilling, excited, sweaty palms. I put a rolled up wad into the compartment. I'll take it all, I says. Tony looks at me and gives me a nod. Permission granted. I stuff it all into my pockets and give some to Gareth. As we head out to the car, Tony says, I keep forgetting to ask, Roger. How's your nan? She was good to me. Ah, oh, she, uh, she's dead, Tony. Yeah. Forgot you two were close. Alzheimer's. Tony looks genuinely bereaved. <laughs> we get out of the car and the wheel spins off. I turn to Gareth and he's already got half a bag of dolly mixture up his nose. Oi, Gareth, what the fuck? This is deeply fucking worrying, son. You owes him a lot of fucking money. Sort it out. Gareth stares at me. Then hugs me tight. It's weird. Gives me a bag of gear and he says, shove some of that up your nose, son. Me and Gareth bonded over drugs. When we were 14, we got hold of some pills and we took them in my nanny's conservatory. She was on a day trip to Blackpool. When we started coming up, Gareth put my nan's Elvis records on. It was the only music we had. He flipped the light switch on and off and we made our own rave. We ran away before nan came back. Spent the rest of the night paranoid up a mountain. We try our luck at the club aftermath. They're usually a bit picky in you about what you're wearing. So we pop round the corner, down an alley. I take my black socks off and put them over my white trainers. Gareth always wears proper shoes on a night out because he's a twat, so he's fine. He gives in the chat so they won't notice my trainers under my socks. So then, boys, how's it tonight? Busy? Is uh, DJ Naughty on or what? And we are in. Music pumps. We head to the bar. Who's round is it? Yiga, yiga, laga, yiga, yiga, laga, yiga, yiga, laga, yiga. At the bar, we notice Richard the Dick. <laughs> Gareth's uncle. He's an absolute bell end. He's a comeback from holiday. Malaga. You can see the white mark on his wrist where his all-inclusive band was. <laughs> He's tanned as fuck. <laughs> we hate him because he used to give Gareth's auntie a clip now and again. But that's nothing, isn't it? Gareth tries to blank him, but that only works for so long. Dick's hammered. He's always fucking hammered. All right, boys, have a good night. Don't look like you. Smile, Gareth. Go on, fucking smile. That's it. Just you fucking remember. I know everything about you, you little prick. The little piggy's at the trough going, sniff, sniff. I've seen you in that blacked out car more times than you know. You just treat me with some fucking respect, all right? They eyeball each other. I pull Gareth away. Leave him, Gar. He's not worth it. We disappear into the toilets. Dirty, shitty toilets. Smell of shit. Piss bangs against the metal urinals. We fold ourselves into a cubicle. Cubicle. Gareth racks up the lines of coke on the toilet paper holder. He does one. I do one. He does one. I do one. He does one. 
Gareth checks, makes sure it's all gone. I hate waste, I do, he says. <laughs> Forward moving, dancing now, feeling like the world has exploded inside of us, like we are the big fucking bang, chatting to everyone, loving everyone, our town moving, dancing, hugging. Tonight is the night, Saturdays don't usually come this good. Feverish, excited, sweating, chewing, jawing our fucking faces off. <laughs> this is it, Gareth shouts. This, me and you, pal, this is it. The bungee's out to the cage. We throw shapes in and out, moving, pulsing, free and solid all at the same time, stroking, feeling, loving, sweating, music pumps. Our favourite tune. I am a giant. Stand up on my shoulders. Show me how you feel. I am, I am, I am, I am a giant. I am, I am, I am, I am a giant. Gareth says something, but I can't hear him. Something, something. Then, I'm off, he shouts. I'm off. Suddenly, he's done. He leaves. Like that. He pushes his way through the heavy, sweaty crowd. He's leaving alone. We always leave together. I follow, but he's faster and smaller. He winds his way through the crowd. Music blasting. I lose him. I'm shouting, Gareth! Gareth! I hit the cold outside air. People smoking, vaping. I'm looking everywhere. Banging into people. Spilling people's drinks. Fuck off on my way, man! When I spot him, he's already halfway down the road. Texting. In amongst the debris of the town, texting, the crowd swallows him up, the light of his phone disappears into the night. He's just a shadow now. Wait, Gareth, they say. Wait, man. He turns back. He does this kind of wave salute and his pinhead disappears. Morning's tough after the night before now. Mm -hmm. 8 a.m. Come down. Come downs get harder, don't they, as you get older? Cravings need water. Mouth's as dry as a fucking desert. Twitching, it's too early. Look up at the patch of damp on my ceiling. It used to look like a butterfly, but now it looks like Russell Brand. <laughs> My bed said this tiny. A bed, a hob, and a lamp. That's it. I scroll through my phone, see something about some lads going on holiday. Beach looks shit. Better beaches in Wales. Serious. <laughs> something about two for one in aftermath. Something about summing down the beach. I call Gareth. Leave a message. Oi, you alright? Cracking, eh? Historical. Can't fucking sleep though. <laughs> What's going on? Fancy break it or what? Call me back. I chuck my joggers on and a t-shirt. I leave the house. Everyone's up. People are like talking. I keep moving. As long as I'm moving, I'm all right, you know? I head down towards the sea. It's a rough day and there's loads of people huddled in a circle. Beth's down there, looking fucking hot. She runs over, she's all windswept, like something out of Baywatch. And I'm all shamed because my hair's a mess. You saw him, didn't you? She says, Gareth. Everyone's talking about Gareth. Yeah, I saw him, but he left. So I went home. As she talks, her lips go into slow motion, and all I can think is, you are smoking hot. She smokes her vape, what a shape, smell of strawberries. She leads me from the prom down onto the sand. There's people still huddled in a circle. I hang off slightly, and I look at Beth. Everyone looks at the ground, but I look at Beth. But then the circle parts, and I can see what everyone's staring at. Beth was younger than me in school. Whenever I saw her, she was rifling through lost property, looking for spare trousers, because she would always piss herself. I thought she was minging back then. All the boys used to call her pisser. As she's got older, she's become more sound. She told me once she wanted to leave this town, go to London, like, and I was like, fucking hell, why would you want to go there? What's London got? The Wales hasn't. Point proven. Exactly. It's my fucking boss. Yeah. I, I, I can't come in. I'm rough. Yeah, see, thing is, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But listen, my friend is... Right? Okay, I'll be there now. Fuck. I'm in work. I know. I'm in work. Mind numbing. Print, look here, put in the trolley. Print, look here, put in the trolley. I go to the toilet. I can't piss because I'm numb. I catch myself in the mirror. I'm like pale as a sheet, sweating. My hands are shaking. Out of the door, my boss is waiting for me. He's bald and sweaty, my boss. He's just come back from Slovakia to get his teeth done. He doesn't usually get jokes, doesn't get me. 
he clicks his fingers all the time. Roger. Roger. Roger! Third time to the toilet today, Roger. Tell me, where were you this morning, Roger? My man. Big night, was it, boy? Heavy night, was it, sunshine? He wipes the sweat off his forehead with a tissue which sticks to it. Now, I know what you're thinking, my boss says. And I want to say that you're a twat, that I can't breathe, that those teeth that are too big and too white are freaking me the fuck out. <laughs> but I just say, what? You're thinking, my boss is on my back. He won't leave me alone, but the thing is, see, as you know, Roger, your toilet breaks are timed. You were employee of the month last month, Roger. Now look at you. You've obviously been spending too much time socialising again, haven't you? Look, I say, I went out with my mate Gareth. Here we go again. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth. That's all you talk about, isn't it? I'm sorry, but you know I had to end this contract. Having sexual relations with a cleaner in a cupboard is not what we expect here. Of. People are saying he's dead. I say. Oh. Right. Well. Gosh. Sorry for that. Uh, excuse me. He leaves the room. He just leaves, and I'm stuck there, sweating and shaking, thinking, can I just go? I wait for a while, but he doesn't come back, so I look out the window onto the factory floor, and he's there by the toilets. I think, fuck it, I give him a wave. He pretends he hasn't seen me, shoots straight back behind the wall and carries on hiding. I take the rest of the day off. Leave a message, Shag. Right? Fucking hell, Gareth. I had to go to work, you know, until he'd he give me the day off. So, what are you up to? Huh? Fancy going somewhere? You know what you do? Call me back. Gareth loved trains. He'd always say to me, let's get on a train and never look back. He loved the idea of running away. This one day, he told me to meet him at the station. He told me we were going to go on an adventure and I wasn't allowed to look at the destination board. I wasn't allowed to know where the train was heading. We climbed aboard and headed off. The, the train sped along and we saw Wales in all its beauty. Mountains like sleepy old men, trees green as fuck, rugby pitches with games being played, rivers and small forgotten towns. He bought us a corned beef pasty and a coke each. When we got back home, it was dark. We walked past the beach, smoked a joint, and he turned to me and he said, Sometimes, Roger, you've got to leave a place to realise how lush it actually is. I never like funerals. Weird, aren't they? Saying that, who likes a funeral? Everyone wears black, which nobody normally wears, and everyone is really quiet, which nobody normally is. I'm stood outside, freezing my balls off, black tie with a stain on it from my nan's funeral. Everyone arrives in dribs and drabs, no one speaks. They look at me, stare at me. Funeral car pulls up. Die looks like a ghost. A fat ghost. Gareth's mum and Richard the dick get out. He eyeballs me. The funeral car has a small box in it with flowers saying, Son. The box is pulled out of the car and onto a trolley. I help roll it into the church and we walk down the aisle. Something about it really fucks me off. Why can't we carry it? Huh? I want to lift it, feel the weight of it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, how do we even know he's in there? We drop it off at the disappearing platform. I love those things. <laughs> like magician kind of shit. We're told to sit and drift off while some twat of a vicar talks about how they knew him, like they were best mates. The box drops down the hall, we sing bread of heaven, and that's that. 
Gareth's mum gets up and her legs go from under her. She falls to the floor. Then Di tries to pick her up, but he can't reach her over his fat gut. So Richard the dick walks over, proud, tanned prick. He picks her upstairs at me and says, Come on, love. You've been through enough. The wake is at the pub, the club. Death behind the bar is red eye, which makes me love her even more. She stands all grieving on the rug. Grieving's sexy, isn't it? <laughs> makes me want to fuck her even more, like. <laughs> Di closes in. He stares at the ham sandwiches on the bar and eats them repeatedly, one after another. He hasn't finished one and he's already stuffing another one. I stand in silence watching him chew. He's broken. He talks with a mouthful. All right, Rod. Ah, I don't know. Lovely spread, isn't it? I love a buffet, see me. I love picking. I love, that's what I love about a buffet. My wife, she buys tapas and I love it. And the thing is, see, tapas just Spanish buffet. I was only saying to Gareth, Ga Gareth, <laughs> not much more could be said, could it? I escape for a breath outside. I stand in the DIY corrugated iron smoking shelter and I look out to the confused sea. Then I notice something behind me. On my neck, behind me, I can feel it getting closer, closing in. When I turn my face, I can see it, a shadow, a black, black shadow. Leave a message, Shark. I'm smoking again, Gah. Have a cheeky fag, innit? Needed to get out. Place a fucking call in. Your father's rough, eh? he hasn't stopped eating. Smells of onions in there, buffet like. I needed to hear your voice, mate. I can't be in there. Call me back. I head back into the wake. The quiet chat has been shattered by Richard the Dick. He talks too loudly to a small group of people. I can't ignore him. I feel the heat rising in my head. And the thing is, see, this town will never forget about it. So black mark as far as I'm concerned. He sent his mother a taxi. Oh yeah, that poor fucking woman. He told her he was gonna do it by text. And I was in the paper and all. And they call in this town, our town, a suicide town. Fucking suicide. Suicide town. Fifth bloke this year. Selfish bastards. Shut up. Richard the Dick looks straight at me. And the thing is, see, he probably had a bag of coke up his nose when he done it. Shut the fuck up! Before I know it, I pinned Richard the dick to the wall. I'm looking at him right in the eye and he's all, what's going on? I grab his throat, lean on it, hold his Adam's apple, rip it tight. I reach backwards, feel it, grab him, found a glass bottle, red mist, itching, hot, 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 rising in my fucking bond stuff, pulsing, gripping, ready to fucking go, rain. Yeah, rain. On my face, it's raining in here. Why is it fucking raining in here? Why are you all staring at me like a bunch of pricks? Water coming out of my stinging, in my mouth now, salty, stomach convulsing, breathing hard, not breathing. Then heaving. I don't fucking know what's going on on my knees. Breathe, Roger, breathe. Fuck off, all of them! The sun moves round my bed sit like a searchlight. It's like it's trying to find the day. Sitting in my two day pants, I watch as time goes by. Prison would be easier. I keep hidden under my duvet. My feet don't touch the ground. There's a smell of eggs and quiet. The damp <laughs> that was a butterfly, that then was Russell Brand, is now just a big black hole. My toilet's clogged with sick. And the laminate flooring which was fitted on top of the old carpet is all sticky. Bottles and cans spill out of the bin. I watch the clock. 
I see the second hand talk and with every tick I feel the world move without me. I sink into the chair. Smell of dust. Can't leave the house. I just eat digestives and watch Homes Under the Hammer. You might have a drag. Sarah. Why you fucking speak? Uh, me? Huh? I don't know. I'm you. I was right, you. Call me back. Prick. I make porridge. I make sloppy fucking porridge. Fuck it. Start Googling. Look in her shoes, look in her shirts, a Google death. Look for jeans, look at watches, and Google suicide. And there's a list, there's a long list. Hanging, cutting wrists, overdose, drowning. Drowning. Drowning tends to be a quiet, silent act. Victims do not usually thrash. Instead, they expend significant energy trying to keep their head above water and may be too tired to shout for help. Drowning is described as a panicked experience. While the victim may appear to be bobbing in the water with their head back, there may be the expression of panic in their eyes. The TV glares. I watch Friends reruns. Episodes I've seen time and time again. It's the one where Joey thinks thanks Chandler for paying all his rent and coffee bills by buying him a gold bracelet. He needed money. Maybe I should have. We were supposed to be going holiday. Malaga. We booked it. He wanted to get his phone fixed today. He asked me if I could go and get him money on Tuesday. We had plans to go to the cinema. He talked about it. He texted his mother. He was texting. He was te- Brett! On my neck, behind me. I could feel it getting closer, closing in. When I turn my face, I can see it. It's a shadow, a black, black shadow. I start to make out his shape. It's like it has a voice. Like it wants to speak. It hangs there, almost breathing. Bigger now. Still. Stock. Still. What do you want? It starts to make me think things, makes me want to do things. I look at the bright lights flickering from the TV, I focus on them, I close my eyes. And when I open them again, it's morning. I leave the house early. Whispers and natter at large. I follow the old familiar path past the river, over the bridge and left onto Cedar Road. The road I take to call him before walking together to school every day. I walk up to number 18. The door hasn't changed since we were kids. Still has the old crusty orange neighbourhood watch sign. The door opens ajar. There's a chain attached. Behind the chain is the little piggy face of Di. Poor fat fucker. Hey Di. How are you faring fella, alright? Sorry I haven't been in touch, I, uh, can I come in, Di? The house smells worse than mine. Unwashed dishes, no air, damp, heavy. Smells like my nan's house, smell of cats and egg. His mum lies paramedic on the couch like a plank. I notice Di's black tie is still lying over the chair, even though it's nearly been a week. There's photos of him everywhere. Photos of him in a Man United t-shirt when he was young. Flowers everywhere. Photos behind lilies. Lilies behind photos. His mum stands and falls on me. She weeps and weeps on me for a long time. Di apologises. He hands me a cup of tea and the milk in it looks like cottage cheese. Di turns to me. What happened after you left the club that night, Rog? You can tell me, I I just want to know what happened to uh, Gareth. I say it was all normal. Uh, We had a few too many. We went our separate ways in the end. Were they drugs? Nah. Of course not, I say. You're bad at that. Lying, you know. Gareth thought the world of you, Roger. But I have to say, you really let us down the other day at the funeral. Richard the Dick has been nothing but kind to us. 
And I think you owe the man an apology. And I want to say, Richard the Dick, that fucking twat prick who clipped your sister. But we just stand in silence. Can I, can I, can I see the texts he sent? Gareth's mum grabs her phone. She doesn't even think about it. She pushes it into my hand gently as if it's, I don't know, as if it's worth a lot of money. I read them to myself. Read them out loud, Di says. All good, you. Me and Roger have had the best night. I just wanted you and Dad to know I love you. Ma'am, I'm Edin. Don't know what to do. I feel lost all the time. This is it, ma'am. I love you both so much. Sorry I didn't write properly. You know I'm shit at all that. It's not your fault. Goodbye. And I'm thinking, that's it. That's all he wrote. Of all the things he could have said, Di grabs me by the arm and says, do you remember him being on his phone? No, I, no, I don't. I lie. I lie again. I keep fucking lying. Thing is, Roger, our Gareth was uh, suffering, you know? The old budgie in the cage. I look at him puzzled. He turns. For the first time, he calls her by her name. June, you tell him. June has it as well, see? His mum looks at me. She has black holes for eyes. Depression, she says softly. The budgie in the cage, Di says. We thought Gareth told you. Feeling hot. Burning up now. I can't stay. This pit is getting on my tits. My head is spinning. I keep seeing his sunken face. I go to leave. I bounce off the walls of the hallway. Knock a picture off the wall. It falls and cracks. I pick it up. And it's a picture of him. Smiling. He must be about seven. He's in his school uniform. I can see through the cracked glass. I remember that photo being taken. I remember that day. I remember thinking I would never grow up. I thought we'd be that age forever. No cares, no worries, just smiling for our school photo. I'm out of his parents' house like a shot, over the bridge and past the river. Leave a message, Shad, you fucking prick! You didn't even fucking tell me! I didn't know, now, now everyone knows, I fucking text your man. I can't, I can't even call me back, Shadow, in front of me. What do you want? What do you want? They'd be better off without you, Roger. What nobody sees, nobody knows, Roger. This pain can go, this feeling can leave. Get it done. Just get it done. Staring up to see. It's still rough, angry. I see a woman walking a three-legged dog, but the dog doesn't give a shit. That's the difference between us and dogs. I can see the woman and the dog's reflection in the wet sand. I see the back of his pinhead over and over again, the panic on his face. I... Beth appears. She looks all open and saintly. You left a fucking right mess in the club the other night. Glass everywhere. Dick is still fucking traumatised from it. I mean, I know he's a knob at that, but you can't just walk around acting like a total prick. Sorry, Beth, I say. Look, Rog, I know that's not what you like. I've always liked you. <laughs> <laughs> Beth stares at me for what feels like a very long time. So I lean in, and then she starts to cry. She hugs me and cries. Roger, are you okay? And I, and I want to say so many things, but I can't say any of them. So I just look at her and say, I'm fine. I smile and tell her, I'm fine. On my walk home, a familiar car shoots past. He notices me, pulls a Yui. It's tiny Tony. He pulls up, a big weed cloud comes out of the car. 
Right, Raj? Oh, Raj, sorry, like to hear about Gara. I hope he knew, I hope he knew we weren't serious about the money, like. We're good for it. I just keep walking. He drives alongside me. Oh, and that stuff is kosher as well, Raj. Just in case you were thinking, you know? Thoughts like, well, now I'm a fly. On a beach, weren't he? Where were you? Thought you two were always close together. Raj, I'm sorry. If there's anything, you know, a couple of grams on me. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that'd be great. I take the gear home, I rack it up. I do one, I want for him. I do one, I want for him. I feel invincible again. I am whole. I am a singer, shagger, drinker. I am a fucking legend. Rivers run because I let them. The sea answers to me. Fuck it. I do another key. I head to the pub, the club, my motherfucker, loco. It's quiet. Just before the rush, Beth is sipping at a pint. She's covered in smoke from her vape. Smell of strawberries. Look, Beth, I says. Sorry I was weird earlier. I did want to tell you something. I'm not fine. I haven't been fine for a while. And I need to tell you the truth. I fucking love you. And I always have. I want you, right? I want you to be the mother of my children. I want you to take care of me, to love me, to hold me tight. I want you. She slaps me. She slaps me again. Second one kind of sobers me up. Cold water. I turn stark reality. She says, what are you doing? Are you fucked in the head or what? Look, Beth, go easy on me, like, I, I lost my mate. Well, he's better off now, isn't he? Better, better off out of it, selfish bugger. I feel shit sometimes, doesn't mean I do what he did, so do me a favour, sober up, sort it out, and for fuck's sake, apologise to Dick. Richard the Dick is propping up the bar. He sips his bow and black like a cup of tea. <laughs> walk over. He's trying to hide from me, I tap him on the back. Start then, Dick. He looks over, the flash of fear in his eyes. What do you want, huh? I'm too sorry, no? Too fucking late, sorry, don't fucking cut it. I should press charges. I don't accept your apology, Roger. Just so you know, I warned you in the club. Two piggies at the trough going sniff, sniff. You both thought you were fucking invincible, but turns out you're all scared as fuck. I'm not here to apologize, Dick. I'm here to tell you that you're a fucking bully. And you, Beth, you of all people should know that Gareth wasn't a selfish man. He was a twat, but he wasn't selfish. Gas me. Look, I want to apologize for something. Remember Nibbles, the rat, yeah? Remember how you stood up for me in front of the whole class? Well, I never did that for you, Gareth. And I promise, I pinky promise, that I'll always stand up for you, mate. Don't call me back. My boss calls me in for a meeting. Roger that. A seat. <laughs> uh, prefer standing, I say. It's been a whole week since you were here last, Roger. How are you doing? How are you feeling? I know, I know, it must be difficult losing a friend. When I lost my nan, I was upset for a week. And then, Roger, you know what I said? I said to myself, pick yourself up, Clive. Dust yourself off and move on. It's difficult. I forgot, I say. I forgot. You're the one being fucking difficult. What's difficult is you giving me grief for not stacking efficiently, or turning up on time, or having a night out. Leave me be, and I leave you be. He looks like a blower fish. You know what I mean? Surprised. 
Well, Roger, with that attitude, what? I think we're gonna have to, what? I think we're gonna have to, do you know what? I fucking quit. I head to the beach. This pain can go, this feeling can leave. Close your eyes, run, keep running and don't stop. I take my shoes off, put my phone in them and I start to run on the sand. It becomes darker, with every step it gets wetter. I run further and further out, the voice gets bigger. Get it done! I reach the sea, lapping in. I step slowly into the ice cold water. White horses crash against each other. The sea starts to grab at my numb feet. It feels good to be close, but cold. So fucking cold, tingling. The water creeps up my knees, my waist, my balls. Water up to my belly now, and head goes under. Brain freeze, breath gone. Can't control it. In, out, in, out, in, out. I'm pulled underwater. Do it, do it, do it. I think of Gareth, his wave salute. Fuck it, I hold myself under. I see the back of Gareth's pinhead. I hold myself longer. I see him, I reach for him. Yes, yes, yes. He done it before, Gareth. We were 16. His mum found him in loads of boxes of paracetamol. Everyone at school wound him up about it. Said he wasn't committed enough to actually do it. He joked it off, told them he misread the instructions and he was trying to get high. Later on though, he told me it was the pain that stopped him. A toxic feeling in his stomach sucked all his energy. But he'd also felt bad because he was supposed to look after his mum, be the man around the house while his dad was in work. Go hard or go home. That was Gareth's motto. Drink till you sink. I hold myself under, 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 up, under, under, up, under, under, up. I wish I'd known it was his last day. Because if I'd known, things would have been so different, you know? I'd buy all the drinks. I'd dress up smart. I'd fly Bon Jovi over to sing Living on a Prayer, because he loved that song. It wouldn't matter how much it cost. And we'd all have chips and curry sauce and I'd sing karaoke on my own because he always said I'd never do that. I'd step up to the microphone, all confident, and say something like, this is for my best mate, Gareth. I wouldn't care what people thought or whether they took the piss. I'd finish the song, which I'd probably murder. I'd look at him, deep like, and I'd say, I fucking love you, mate. Under, under, up, under, under, up. I'm coughing, spluttering. I've swallowed the salt. See, air, need air, breathe, up, arms, pulling, tired, exhausted, blissful, serene, excited, peaceful, head buzzing, bright colours. Bang. No. No. I regain my feet grab at the sand of my toes, pull myself to the shore, neck to chest, to stomach, to leg, to feet, I fall onto the sand, and pull myself away from the dark, deep sea salt night water, I'm freezing, I'm feeling lightheaded, the beach is spinning, I'm sick, it's yellow, it's minging, and I'm shivering, the air is cold, but I manage to gear up and stagger back up the beach, my feet are numb, they say the sea cures all ills. There's silence apart from the sound of the odd seagull. I pass a couple up against the railings, bumping hips, grabbing, holding each other tight, necking. They see me pass. Ah, oh, that's Roger. That's the one. You're right, mate. You okay? You look a bit fucking wet. I walk on, ignore them. Smell of the sea follows me like shit aftershave. I pass the charity bin and nicker coat. I duck into an offie. Pick up two cans of Stella, please. I walk up the hill towards the creme. I see so many old gravestones. It takes me a while, but I get to the new section of the graveyard. I'm searching for his name. And as I'm searching, certain names and ages stand out. Names that have been in the paper, on the news and stuff. John Humphreys, 19 years old. David Jones, 28 years old. Jack Peters, 18 years old. Luke Williams, 41 years old. Freddie Evans, 32 years old. 
wife's children. 31 years old. This white marble with gold right there. He would have fucking hated it. Mm. I open a can and sit next to it. I open up his can, raise it to the sky, and pour it onto the grass beneath the stone. Stella was your favourite when it got. I look at the view. Wales in all its beauty, big fucking trees, dewy, the smell of pine car air fresheners, but real, you know? There's a red and orange sunset. It glows, another day falling on my town like a blanket. The town I've been in since I was young. It's owned me my whole life. Most people live and die in this town, never leave. I notice a bird flying overhead. Big fucker. It spirals round and round. It's so close I can see its feathers. It drops from the sky like a sack of shit. And when it comes back up, there's another bird flying alongside it. They chase each other for ages, pissing each other off, swooping down onto one another. Until eventually, one bird keeps spiralling round and round and the other one leaves. Flies off. Off into the distance until it's just a dot. I look at Gareth's stone, take it in. Walk back down the hill. I start jogging, running, sprinting, as fast as I can, breathless. I feel alive. I'm at the train station. I look at the tracks. One line in, one line out. There's a train in three minutes. I step past the yellow line and onto the white one. Deep breaths, Roger. Two minutes. Slow breaths. Sometimes, Roger, you've got to leave a place to realise how lush it actually is. One minute. I brace myself, ready to go. The front of the train hurtling towards me. I brace myself for pain. I step out and board the train. It pulls away and I don't look back. I take a seat. I look ahead of me, graffiti scribed into the back of the chair. The train pulls out of the station, and as I travel, I start to see mountains like sleepy old men, trees green as fuck, rugby pitches with games being played, rivers and small forgotten towns. We hurtle along, we head into a tunnel. The shadow stands in front of me. People go missing in the dark, don't they? I felt like I've gone missing. But when I look up and look ahead, I look at what's about to come out, come out of the tunnel. I can see the grass ahead, the sky and the trees. Sometimes that light is bright and sometimes I can hardly see it. The important thing is, I know it's there. I face the shadow. Okay. I say, let's talk. <laughs>